So the only thing we have to look at next <coughs> before we hit logs is E. So it's called the natural base. So unfortunately, I cannot tell you exactly what E is until we uh, get to calculus class. Uh, one thing I can tell you, which won't make very much sense, E is the number such that this function approaches as and approaches infinity. And if we look at this, this is not quite like a rational function, not quite a polynomial. It's kind of halfway between. So it's not a function that we're familiar with. All right, what uh, useful things I can tell you is that E is very close to uh, 2.71. So E is approximately 2.71. Seven one. You can just use two point seven. That's good enough. All right. So that's enough about e. We'll see e again in logarithms, <coughs> which we're going to start right now. All right, we'll start with the, uh, we will begin with the definition, but before we talk about that, we saw that all exponential functions, well, all two that we graphed, but all of them in general, are increasing or decreasing. So what that means, all of exponential functions are one to one. So what does that mean about these functions? What property do you get when you have a one to one function? We did an entire section on this. So they are one to one because they were either increasing or decreasing. We looked at the graph and passed the horizontal line test. But what does that tell us about the function? What's that? So we got one input for every output, but what does that mean about the function itself? What can we, what exists if you know your function is one to one? Oh, inverse, there we go. So that was the entire, pretty much the entire reason we looked at one to one, is so we could determine if function had an inverse or not. All right, all exponential functions are one to one, and thus they have inverses. Actually, I should write so, or therefore, they have inverses, not and. Thus, they have inverses. 